Okay, as you can see, we have our back portion of the fuselage here uh, from our last fade away. I've got that glued in now. And we've got uh, what's what looks like pretty strong, nice, lightweight fuselage going on here. The next step is to take your tri-stock. I believe I included that on the shopping list. Your quarter-inch tri-stock. And honestly, quarter-inch is a little large. You could get by easily with, um, you know, eighth-inch. But quarter inch is what my hobby shop had, and that's what I put in. But what I've got here is I have glued in a couple of pieces of those with the tri stock there and there. That's going to beef up the firewall so I can mount pretty much anything on here. I'm recommending the Tower Pro 240821 with, a, with an 8 4 prop for this, but maybe you've got a Park 400 or a Park 450 that you want to use. Well, you certainly need a strong firewall mounted. Again, this is just tri stock see the profile kind of there my bad lighting but I've got those glued in now I want to show you on a previous version that I've built of this airplane I've got the high wing fun fly version and this is what it looks like and instead of just gluing a piece of balsa all the way across you know this is where my battery is gonna go if this were a, a nitro model it's where my fuel tank would go so I thought hey why not have our fuel tank for electric here too Incidentally, these models will run very nice on like a Norvell 061 or, you know, a, a typical half A type type engine. But anyway, what I've got here is I've got some uh, eighth inch balsa glued cross grain this way and cross grain this way. And then the grain running lengthwise with a little piece here that I've, you know, kind of glued on there. That creates a little hatch. Now, how am I going to hold the thing down? A couple things you could do. You could take a small wood screw, go through here, drill a hole, harden it with CA, take a small piece of ply, and jut it out from underneath here, glue it on the bottom, and then you could simply screw your hatch down like that. I think I'm actually going to use some rare earth magnets, but um, my order has not come in yet. But when we, this works really good for the high wing version. Um, We've got a landing gear consideration, though, when we're building the low-wing version, like the one I'm building here. So the way I'm going to fix that is instead of this being, you know, regular balsa, this, this back piece, I'm going to go ahead and use 1 8 inch light ply for this section, and then I'll use balsa for the hatch and balsa for this cross section here. Now, I'm probably going to increase this length here that I did, I just eyeballed it. I mean, I could give you a measurement, but I'll probably increase that length a little bit, decrease this a little, because I need to make sure that this hatch is large enough that I can put my battery in and out of it. I'm going to be using a 3S1000, so I need to make sure that my hatch is always large enough to accommodate that. So that's the kind of system we're going to be doing. Now on this airplane, I did kind of a funny thing for landing gear. I've got some uh, 30 second light ply and I beefed up here and drilled some holes and additionally I've done the same thing for uh, again with the lighting but I've got some pieces in there and back in here and here and the reason I've done that is I've got a wire landing gear that I've mounted here or well I will be mounting here and it actually zip ties in place so that if I come in too hard I'll break one of those little small zip ties rather than you know ripping out the ply or ripping out the fuselage so anyway that's what I'm going to use uh, on the high wing version but on the low wing version we've got a little bit different challenge again so I'll be putting a you know piece of you know something like that in place uh, full width but um, I'll probably have it just wide enough to accommodate maybe some flat aluminum that's maybe a sixteenth thick or so because I'll be able to bend that and probably do it a half inch, probably three quarter inch wide by sixteenth thick by however long I feel it needs to be to make a nice a nice landing gear. Anyway, mount your tri-stock and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start doing the hatch. Again, I'm going to run a little strip of eighth inch light ply across and then build the rest out of balsa. I'll show you that when I'm done. It's so easy. I don't have to show you how to do it. You can figure out how to do it. Cut your pieces oversized because you're going to use your sanding block and smooth everything all out when you're done. So that's what we'll resume with. I'll show you that as it's completed when we're all finished. Or when we come back rather. <laughs> All right, a few minutes later and lots of balsa dust. This is where we are. You remember last, uh, what, two weeks ago we built this wing 
And now we have a fuselage. And I want to show you what I did. I have, just like we discussed earlier, I put in a piece of ply that's about an inch thick in this dimension because I'll get a piece of um, aluminum, like I say, about a sixteenth of an inch by one inch, uh, bend it around and make a landing gear out of it. Again, this is a low wing. And I put a short, small piece cross grain this way of balsa. And finally, I made a hatch. And I have a little bit of that 30 second ply, because it's light and it works well, that I've just cut and stuck in there. So now we have a hatch. I'll put a screw in here in the middle with a little ledge for it to thread into, or um, a little ledge that I'll extend out and put a rare earth magnet, either way. Um, so that's where we have what we have here. Now it's hard to see, You're probably going to be impossible to see, but I've rounded all of these edges. No sharp corners here, folks. It's all nice and smooth. As well, I have cut out my lightning holes. And, you know, again, if you, once you have this part done, you'll see why we waited until the end to cut these out. It's very fragile now. Once we get some covering on it, it'll be okay. Now, you may ask yourself, gosh, Crash, or you may ask me, gosh, Crash, how do I cut these things out? Well, what I've done is I've taken one of these knives super cheap you usually get a couple of them for a dollar at the uh, harbor freight or uh, dollar stores or whatever and i cut out in a fisheye pattern i guess laying laying my knife down i would enter here and then cross and cut you know basically a pattern like that and then after that i just took the dremel to it and now you say hey i don't have a dremel i went for the first i want to say 14 years of building without a Dremel. When I finally bit the bullet and bought one, it was like, oh my gosh, how did I ever build this long without it? Well, how did I do it? Well, I, you know, I cut it all close to the lines and then I would use oh, a little piece of sandpaper to get in here and get these circles or these uh, radiuses. And hey, how did I do that? I took a piece of sandpaper. Well, in this case, I got an old dead AA battery. If you wrap a piece of sandpaper around it nice and tight and keep pressure on it, wow, you can get under here. Even though I used my Dremel on all this hard stuff, I went back and used the old school method just so that you could see the outcome. There's no Dremel on any of these radiuses. Uh, if you're using a Dremel, a barrel sander is all you need. But this does work. And with sanding blocks and stuff, then uh, you know you can you can make this all happen. I happen to have these little sanding blocks, basically like an emery board, and I was able to go in there and smooth things out. But anyway, what we have here is a the end of our work for this week. We have a nice EQSC low wing style fuselage, and we are we're pretty much done. There are a few other things we can do to it, but I think we're going to hold off until until next week. So here we have it. Um, build your EQSC. Send me pictures. If you have any questions, send them to me and uh, and we will uh, get them answered for you on the air. And uh, look forward to all you guys having my airplane in your hands so uh, you can do uh, you can be a scratch builder yourself. All right. See you next week.